Well, Taylor, thank you so much for your cheetah surprise and Ralph for your lion surprise. And then everybody, here is the third big cat we get in sub-Saharan Africa. This is a leopard and this is Tandi. And we have found her and she's at her old den site and we did get a brief, brief visual of the cub. It's just scampered away back to its little hole. So we are on the back side from where you can see that hole. Tundi's not in a horrible mood, but she's letting us know that she needs some space today. So where we parked for our crisp, special Christmas sighting, we're not going to be able to park there. But there's another access to where she is where we will eventually get around. What I want to do is I'm just going to sit here and we're going to film for a bit. And I'm going to talk the way that I'm talking. And I'm just going to let her relax. Tandy, it's 2018. We love you and we love your little one and everyone will be so happy to be able to see your little cub. Um, so I think what we're going to do, everybody, we tried very hard for the Burmese this morning. That wild dog track is so heavily mixed in with hyena tracks that I, I really am having trouble uh, getting direction on it. It seems like a little bit more east. And I think one of the reasons why Tandy is having a little bit of a moment, she, you can't see it now, but as we pulled in, she just let us know she needed more space, is because of the amount of hyena activity that wild dog would have possibly come past here. Um, so she's probably been hounded a bit. But how gorgeous is she? And she's very full, possibly from that steamboat that you saw her with yesterday with Scott. Or actually, I'm not sure if we ended up seeing her specifically with the steamboat kill, but I do know that Scott had that steamboat kill. And then when he came back, he got that brief sighting of her and the little one. And then last night before we had to close down due to lightning. Oh, there's the cub's head, Ferg, right, right behind her. There. Oh, it just went down. Don't worry. There, it's poking up now. No. I'm going to... There, there it is, there it is, there it is. Yes! There's your screenshot for 2018, everybody. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't, I can't even handle it. Okay, I'm going to go into whispers now. Because obviously everyone's relaxed a little bit. And the cubs relaxed enough to come up. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't, I can't even... Oh, look. There's your screenshot. I lied before. Oh my goodness. Happy 2018. <gasps> epic. Absolutely epic. Thank you, Tundi. Thank you, Tundi. See, that's the face. Now, what's interesting about that face is some of that has to do with us. Some of it has to do with the fact that she was hounded hectically with the hyena. So, less to do with us, more to do with the hyena. And then also, that cub has very sharp claws and very sharp teeth. So, when it's climbing around mum when she's perched like that, it's not always comfortable for her. So, I don't, I don't want anyone to think that we're going to end up in a scenario where Tandi doesn't want us here. I just need you all to be aware of the differences in her behavior. Now, she could end up getting annoyed and deciding that her bubble needs to be much bigger from where we are, and she will let us know that. She's not doing that at the moment right now. She's just full, and it rained, and it was hectic, and there was hyenas, and then now we found her. She's not hiding anymore. Um, but if she really didn't want us here when we first pulled in, she would have told us immediately. So I don't want anyone to have uh, a, an unsure moment. Just be aware. James, you're... S James, you're saying big cat trifecta success. James, indeed. Big cat trifecta success, indeed. Look Look at that little cub just there by her tail. Now you see how she's calmed down a bit more after the cub stopped climbing on her? You see that? So just, I, I, it's very difficult sometimes because we do do, the our screen is only so big. And so the, the things around where I am, we can't always see. So I just want you guys to know that Ferg and I have been doing this for quite a while. I mean, Ferg's been in wildlife photography for, what, a, 10 years now, Ferg? 14 years and I've been guided and going into my 11th year so we're really good at reading them and reading their behavior and reading the scenarios and again you'll see she sort of calmed down a little bit and the cubs stopped climbing on her and now the cubs going to go back up and so we'll probably get a few more snarls but also, I mean, can you imagine you've just had your, 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 I don't know, just pick a holiday dinner and you're really full and you're lying on your sofa and your little two-year-old keeps jumping on you. 
Yeah, the feet are huge. Hey, good call, Nikki. I'm wondering if maybe we'll be able to do a little bit of sexing today. Oh my goodness, look at that. Okay. I can't. I can't even deal. I'm so excited, everybody, and I'm so happy you're just as excited as I am. Um, the thought we had about maybe having to go around to the other side, I think as long as this cub is climbing around and doing what it's doing right now, we have such a beautiful little spot here. I think we're going to stick here for a while. I'm getting emotional again, everybody. Sorry. I think we should just take a moment and just enjoy this. Zephy, you're saying thank you so much for a great end to 2017 and beginning of 2018 for you. Zephy, you're welcome. Everyone, you're welcome. The cuteness overload is too much right now. I can't decide which siding I like best. That one we had on Christmas Day or this first one for 20... Oh, look, 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 look. <gasps> and the light's coming through. The cub's now down into the, the other part of, of that uh, hollowed out hole. Otondi, you beaut, you've done so well. Here we go, everyone. I'm itching for my camera. Tristan might be right. I think it's a girl. Tristan might be right. Oh, look, everybody. You all are going to have a hundred screenshots off this sighting. Everyone, I will get into some more factual detail and things like that um, a little bit later in, into our sequence, but I think that this is just too much fun and cuteness to watch. That I think we're going to do more of a, a quiet, a few more quiet moments here with this and allow everyone to really, really let it sink in, this, how special this is. And then we'll start getting into leopards and cubs and tondi in this one. Absolutely fantastic. So that little one is busy doing some grooming of mum. And also, it seems as if trying to get a little reaction out of mum. Again, let's think about our scenario of you very full and possibly tired lying on the couch and your toddler is busy jumping around on top of you. Maybe not even two years old. Let's say you've got a five-year-old. And it's like, mom, come and play. Mom, come, let's go. Mom, let's... You see that? So that cub jumped on the other side and Tony's like, oh, I'm so annoyed. And then she sees us and she's like, now I'm just, I'm annoyed with everything. You, you see? <laughs> 
Oh, Tundi, it's difficult to be a mother. I'm sorry, my sweetie. So now imagine that she had more than just this one cub. Let's say that she had two or three cubs. Can you imagine the how how full her paws would be, her hands would be, um, with that scenario? It, it's it's very difficult to catch any rest, and it's difficult to um, sort of be your usual lazy leopard self because you have this. <laughs> You have this little life that just is excited. It's not raining anymore. There's no thunder and lightning. It wants to move around. It wants to be absolutely um, frantic in, in its activity. And mom really, really just wants to rest. Yeah, a lot of you are sending through the comments now where it's looking like a female. I'm with the back end that we saw there I'm leaning towards that now slightly as well I just want to because this cub is still I think we're just going on to eight weeks we're between seven and eight weeks I just want to give it a little bit more time uh, for anything that needs to drop to possibly drop but yeah I'm I'm slightly torn myself I don't know if my bet with Tristan's going to carry on but we'll have to wait and see. Tris will be here for a week without me, so we'll we'll let him get a few visuals and see if he keeps going with his female. And then when I get back, hopefully we have a bit more, um, a, a bit more screenshots, a bit more photos, and a bit more sightings, and longer time for this little one to develop uh, into into itself as well. Alright, so leopards. Leopards can have anywhere from sort of two to four cubs. They usually have two to three. And of those cubs, it's very unusual for all of them to survive. We don't know exactly how many cubs uh, Tundi had in the beginning because of where her den was and we had to close it off because they're so little and we need to give her space. But so we have... <laughs> We have this one who's currently playing with its mother's tail and <laughs> having a blast. Um, and again, like we talked about, they'll have uh, sort of three dens over roughly over the first three months. Now, what I'm finding interesting is it looked as if she had moved her den. And then we were chatting about um, how possibly she's just moving the, the little one around and, and bringing kills sort of not to close, not exactly to the den, not a full kill. Um, we have seen little bits and bobs being brought in. Um, and then maybe moving the cub around. But now we're back. Oh, is it going to nurse? Look, it wants to try and nurse. We'll see if mom lets it. It doesn't look like she's going to let it. Um, and then now we're finding her back at what we're, what I would consider the second den site because the, the true second den site is... 50 meters from where we are um, so she seems to really like this area and this seems to be the area that she's most comfortable in she's very annoyed with her cub right now so I think for the foreseeable future unless something happens she'll be here and that's very normal with leopards as as they carry on if they find a spot that they're really comfortable in when the cubs sort of two months going on to three months uh, they'll, they'll stick in that area All right, now I think what we're going to do is we are going to head back up to the Mara, um, to Rolf, and have a look at a beautiful herd of Ellie's. We're not going anywhere. We're going to stick here, and we'll see you all shortly. Cheers, Rolf. Thanks so much for that. We all love an Ellie, and I believe Taylor has just really having some gremlins attacking her unfortunately um but that's okay we've got to tundi and we have the little cub ferg was just commenting just now that she's like a haggard mother she's really over <laughs> over the the amount of energy this cub has at the moment and you can see she really does just want to rest now this cub will eventually tire itself out it is maybe nine minutes now to the east coast in the states new year's so i'm hoping that the cub sticks around at least for that so that anyone that is watching with us for their new year's eve celebration that side gets to have beautiful cute moments to cheers their apple juice too or non-apple juice depending on what you're drinking look at her she's finally relaxing 
So it's interesting as well where she's chosen this, this particular den site. It's a hollowed out tree. Obviously it means that the cub can be inside. And then I'm just marveling at the fact that she's found such a spot that also allows her to be comfortable as well. So she can lay on top of the, the dead log now and be as camouflaged as possible and also rest in the shade. And then when the light starts changing, she can actually just go underneath it. And then she's never too far from her cub when she's around. Sometimes she's a, a bit more to the left at the, the older den site. Um, but, but most of the time that I've seen that, that we've tried here, this is the spot that she likes to be in. Now, I think if we had come here first thing from drive I don't necessarily think she would have been where she was I think she has started moving um, after those hyenas have left uh, the, the hyena tracks mixed in that with that one set of wild dog tracks was definitely fresh enough for them to have possibly been here our let's say our first hour of drive while we were busy looking for that Birmingham mail which means she either would have been hiding or she possibly could have been a little bit farther from the den just trying to detour them away uh, from where this cub is. Now, it would be very difficult for a hyena to get into those crevices, but if the cub was out, that, that would have been a, a possibility. And we, ob we obviously don't want that to happen, and she obviously doesn't want that to happen as well. But it is, is a definite uh, and unfortunate part of of being a young predator out here in the bush you have to be so careful of other predators other leopards other lions other hyenas cheetah wild dog but you also at this age with the small they have to be very careful of things like slender mongoose um, and birds of prey and snakes as well I actually haven't seen the cub in a little bit and I'm wondering if maybe it's tired itself out or if it's just found uh, some insects to play with inside of that hollowed out log. I think in a little while, because uh, Tundi is now re fully relaxed because her cub's not jumping on top of her, we will try and move around to a slightly different spot. But we'll, we'll stick here for, for just now. Maybe next time we go up to the Mara, we'll busy move around and then, and then come back. Giraffe-centric, what a fantastic comment. You're saying it's amazing how we got to see Christmas Day, this beautiful sighting, and now New Year's Day and how lovely luck works. It's true, giraffe-centric. It's a little bit of skill and then a lot of luck mixed in. And we are very fortunate. Very fortunate indeed. I wouldn't say that I'm hardened to a lot of things in the bush, but I would definitely say that there's a lot of magical things that happen that I've seen a bit of. Um, and I, I get excited about them, but this with the cub popping out like it like it was doing and giving such a sheen, scene actually makes me truly emotional. I mean, it's just so tiny. And it's amazing that they allow us to do this because they, they, they could go into spots where we could never get a vehicle and then we would not be able to have have these experiences. So it's, I'm, I'm very grateful. We're all very blessed. Two minutes till New Year's on the East Coast in the States. I hope you all are topping up your apple juice and getting ready for countdown. The sun's going to start creeping in on her shortly and she'll probably, I would say she, in the next sort of 20 minutes, she'll probably move and find... Um, a more shady spot. It's shady now, but this, the sun that's coming up is getting very, very warm. Can we hear all the bird calls that are popping up? I 
Diane, you're saying that Tundi's cub has big ears like Tumba. T uh, Diane, I will have to take your word for it. I still have not seen Tumba. Tumba's still on my list. I think he's the last one on my list that I need to see. That will be that will be a nice New Year's when I get back from leave. Having a Tumba sighting will be high on my list. That and, and confirmation on the sex of Tundi's cub. Full confirmation. Even more bird song coming through. So we have Southern Boo Boo that's been calling. We have redback shrikes that have been calling. We have cape turtle doves that have been calling. We have cameroptras that have been calling. We have tawny flank prinia that have been calling. Blue waxbills. Woodland kingfisher, if I didn't say it. There's a lot happening right now. curious earlier on we had the cub that was sort of gnawing on the backside of Tundi's head there doing a little bit of grooming and you were asking if the cub was possibly picking off ticks and um, doing it for the blood look I mean it could have been picking off ticks I have never seen um, a leopard actively trying to eat ticks before so I don't think it was for the blood I think more of what it was doing was that it was practicing a bit of aloe grooming um, and and giving a little bit of love to its mum um, over sorry I've just got a really huge bee that's flying around my head at the moment are you gonna come to no it's gone now add a little um, so I think it was more of a uh, an absent-minded way of trying to show affection and do a bit of grooming. If any of you have smaller children, say around four years old, um, and they ever want to brush your hair, the way that a four-year-old brushes your hair compared to the way that your teenage uh, child brushes your hair is two very different things. They're both showing the same amount of affection and love, it's just the dexterity and deftness of it is two very different things. And that's what I equate that cub doing now, where it's trying very hard to do some loving grooming but it's not necessarily fully able to use all of its functional parts as well as it will later on in life. Happy New Year, East Coast of the United States. Ringing in the New Year with Tundi and her little one. How fantastic. Cheers, everybody. Enjoy that. Now you can see she's a little bit more awake. She's trying to either find a more comfortable spot or you can see there's a bit of sunlight that's coming off onto her back there. So she's probably warming up. And I have a sneaky suspicion that our cub has completely tired itself out. So I think we got here at just the right time to get that amazing sighting. I'm not going to go anywhere yet. Uh, we are going to give it some more time, but I do think that all of that energy has been used up for now. Deanna, you're saying earlier you heard a red crested Quran. Deanna, it's entirely possible. It's not one of the sounds that I uh, heard myself, but I've also been chatting a little bit, so it might have happened in, in the background. Manu, you're thinking you heard a chin spot baddest calling? Yes, there was definitely a chin spot baddest calling. I heard that one as well. The three blind mice. Here's some Franklins in the background now. Or, sorry, they're now called Spurfowl, those particular Natal Spurfowl. Haven't heard any guinea fowl yet this morning. There's a crested barbet.
and a brown crown chakra. Ferg, can you see at our 12 o'clock? That little tawny flank prinia is going completely nuts. I'm gonna try and, I think it's a tawny flank prinia. I'm gonna, ugh, why? It is definitely a tawny flank prinia, but it flew out of screen. Sorry, you could see really nicely uh, the front of the, the chin going as it was making its little chip, 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 chip. There goes that southern boo-boo. I don't know if you heard that sound in the back. Now we haven't heard the black-headed oriole that we've been asking for, and Ferg and I were trying to get the um, African hoopoe on screen the other day, but it kept getting chased away by doves, so I am still aware of those requests from several days ago. We just haven't been able to fulfill them yet, sorry. And the ground, southern ground hornbill as well. Ooh, and an orange-breasted bushrike. Coffee, tea, or me? It might be a little bit too far, but there's a male violet back starling in that. All right, everyone, the cub came out for a little, just a little bit, and then was clamoring on top of Tundi and pissed her off. So Tundi is now rearranging herself a little bit. Um, we're just sitting, we're on a, we're at a different angle and we're just sitting a little bit farther back. This poor mother is being harassed by her cub to such an extent that she, you can see that she really, she needs a holiday, she needs a break. Where she's sticking her head down now is part of the cavity where the cub likes to be. So I'm happy with where we are, she is happy where we are, so I have a feeling that we might get one or two more glimpses of the cub, so I would like to try and see if we can manage that, because I think with in the next sort of five minutes or so she's going to meander off to a different position to be in the, the sun's really hitting her top of the, the log there yes she's a beautiful beautiful lady now her belly is very full so she might go off and do some hunting uh, but I really think that she's going to spend most of today resting up in the shade not far from this den um, it's a possibility her teats are looking a little bit full. It's a possibility that she might nurse before she goes down to rest, but we'll just have to wait and see. Her space bubble today is definitely affected when, oh, that's what I wanted to tell you. When we were uh, moving around to the other side here, we saw those, oh, beautiful dragonfly. Thanks, for it. We saw those um, uh, tracks of those hyenas that are, we're five meters from the den site. So her space bubble has changed a lot today because of that. We were right in our assumptions that they came past here. She's seen something. I'm just gonna give it a minute. She's seen something that I can't see. Could be those hyenas again. Could be Niala, could be Impala. I'm trepidatious to move too much. I don't want to interrupt anything. So I'm going to give it a beat and see what happens. Do you see anything, Ferg? I can hear the squirrels going now. So she's moving off a little bit. Okay, guys, I think let's um, <clears throat> let's reverse. I'm not hearing or seeing anything. Let's reverse and see if we can see her again, wherever she might have gone, or possibly see what made her move off. I have to leave more sightings of our cub to Tristan for this afternoon. But I think we did very well. guys sorry this is a tricky little fantastic okay oh there she is where did you go did you just make a big loop around us she did she made a big loop around us 
interesting. So something obviously caught her attention, and then she moved off, and then here she is. All right, well, we'll stay with her for a little bit longer. Not a problem there. Earlier when we were, when we didn't see her, and there's a lot of thick bushes there, close to a den like this, I don't want to drive over thick bushes or make huge amounts of loud noise. Um, we prefer to sort of have our uh, one little area where we can sort of loop around. Now, because her teats are heavier in the back and because she's had, heading back towards where that cub is, um, I am going to stay with her now. I am going to carry on because this is her moving back. She's happy. She's content. And I'm hoping that we might get another visual maybe nursing. So I'm going to let her move the direction she wants to move and then we will follow her in. Question. Um, you're curious to know if her and the cub were in danger, would she get up and run? Um, look, every scenario is, excuse me, every scenario is different. Every, oh, would she pick it up and run? Oh, so San Diego, when she's moving with that cub in her mouth, it is difficult for her to move properly. Um, so I don't necessarily think that would be her first instinct. I think the first thing that would happen is that, let's say they were at the den site, if something were to come along, that cub's going to go into that, that log where it's very difficult for other things to get into. I mean, Tundi can't even fit inside that log. And then Tundi would either actively defend or, or, or move away, um, having the predator go with her, possibly. Um, trying to pick, have that cub in her mouth. She can't actually get up to a top speed. And then what if she needs to turn around and, and, and sort of bite or claw at whatever is trying to attack her? Then she can't do that with the cub there. All right, let's come forward again. you're asking if she carries the cub back here uh, back of the neck when she's changing dens I think if it's longer distances definitely Bill she'll pick it up but I mean when um, one of the Juma vehicles saw her moving when we thought she was moving dens recently farther up north the cub was just walking alongside beside her um, when the cub's much 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 smaller she definitely puts it in her mouth when she's changing dens all right <clears throat> So here we go, she's coming straight back towards the den. And I think what we are gonna do is we're gonna stay in our original spot for, just tell me when you want me to stop. Okay, we're gonna stay in our original spot. I'm not gonna go around to the other side. Mauricia, you're saying maybe she wanted to lure us away and then you put an LOL <laughs> at the end of that. Um, yeah, it could be. I definitely think she saw something. And she did She did a funny little loop just now. Let's see what she does now. This is one of the things that I love about her allowing us to be around the site like this is we get to watch behavior that we can know about from research and we can know about from um, various different components but to actually be able to um, chat about it and show it to you is very different and then also as a guide um, and also for Ferg as a wildlife um, what are you a filmographer photographer what is your title Ferg doesn't have a title. We're gonna call. We're gonna come up with a title for Ferg. Everyone, you have to come up with a title for Ferg. Um, it allows us to put um, memories and pictures into our encyclopedic brains to be able to recognize it for another time that this is what's happened. Listen, listen. She's calling the cub. There's so much. Oh, there's the cub on top of the on top of the log. It's right on top. 
There we go. Fantastic. I knew we'd get another sighting. There we are. Hello, little one. Now, Tandy's going up onto the side of a bank that's just to, to the north of this log. If she brings the cub with her, there is a little spot that we can get around to to watch them from there. So we will definitely do that. I just want to see what happens. This is the spot. Ferg and I always look at this spot and we just want to be parked underneath because then you're at a low angle. I don't think she's going to allow us to park underneath, but she will allow us to park where we parked at Christmas. Um, and show across. There's a photo that I shared with all of you after we wrapped on Christmas of Tundi lying down on the bank just there and the cub um, running up to her. And, and that's, I'll, I'll give you that angle just now. The cub's watching her, twitching its tail. It's a tiny little tail. See that? See that little white that we always talk about? Inherit instinct, that interest. So, interested in mum and what mum's doing. Before I move the vehicle, I do want the cub to first decide what it wants to do. <laughs> and it might just completely ignore Tundi and play around on that log. Look how well the cub blends into that log, into the 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 features, the textures, and also the colorations. Notice how much darker the cub is compared to Tundi, which allows it, and it's also smaller, so it allows it to be in these shady little dappled areas, and it can be very hard to pick them out. And that's nice, coming into the sun a little bit, smelling where mum was. Always curious, constantly curious about their environment. It's how they learn. Very similar to human children. Always curious about their environment. So if you're saying this is the best, this is definitely the best, everybody. I'm really enjoying this. I'm glad that we're getting this additional uh, segment for everybody. <laughs> Diana, you're saying that this little cub is a good climber. This little cub indeed is a good climber. Again, inherent ability, something that they're born with and then practice throughout their lifetime to get better at and build those muscles. A lot of what this cub is doing, the way that it's perching and where it's climbing, it's already starting to build those muscles nicely. Now I can't tell if the cub has gone back into the hole as the hole's on the other side of the tree there, or if it's decided to start climbing up towards Tundi. I am going to give it another couple of seconds and then I'm just going to very slowly meander around just so we can see her a titch better. Everybody's pretty relaxed and good. I have a couple of older sisters and they have many, many children between the two of them. And some of these scenes that we're watching now is reminding me of them, especially when they had their um, second or third kids and you're just really exhausted and you're trying so hard to be the best mom you can possibly be and uh, you just have some moments where you're like oh my goodness everyone has to go away and then you just have these really beautiful relaxed moments like now all right while i'm busy repositioning i think let's head up to taylor for her to give us an update about what's happening in the Maasai Mara and then we'll see if we can manage one more last glimpse, glimpse of everything that's happening here. We'll let you know as soon as we get one.
Thanks, Taylor. Sorry about the comms breakup a bit there. I hope that your alarm calls result in some sort of a catch for you. Um, we've repositioned down and gotten sort of this beautiful little low angle shot of Tundi. The cub ended up not coming up to where mum is, but has gone back inside of its little den. It is now very warm out. So I was really hoping that the cub would join Tundi up on top here and do a bit of nursing, but it looks as if nap time has really ensued now. And I believe that Tundi's probably gonna be doing the same thing. She's found a nice little shady spot. Ferg and I were just chatting now. We were noticing how when the cub was playing with Tundi on top of the log there, how quiet the cub was. Uh, with lion cubs, I mean, a lion cub sees its mub and it's just wow, 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 wow. They're very, very, yeah, sorry, Tandy. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> I know, it's a horrible impression. Um, and that, to me, again, shows differences between these two big cats from a very early age. Um, lions being very vocal from a from an early age, and then throughout their lives, uh, they are a larger cat than uh, than a leopard. And I mean, a whole a leopard's whole demeanor is meant to hide and camouflage. So that cub is is silent. It's still doing the same sort of movements that a lion cub would do, but this little leopard cub is doing it quietly, regally. Let's go with regally. Leopards are very regal. That's a really great question, Bobby and Shamsun. You're asking, do cubs flem and grimace? I've seen older cubs flem and grimace. These little tiny ones, I was noticing when it was smelling, this, this leopard cub in particular was smelling around the log there. I didn't see a flem and grimace, but I, I think that with lion cubs, say, from an earlier age, because there's usually more of them, not always, but usually more of them, and then therefore there would be a lot of uh, urine and, and things for them to start practicing that Fleming Grimace. That's one of the reasons why I've possibly seen it more. I've also personally spent more time with lion cubs than leopard cubs. Uh, Tristan would be an interesting one to ask about that, if he's ever seen them from a young age, the, the leopard cubs do it. Tristan spent more, more time with um, leopard cubs than I have. It's interesting how we carry on with our throughout our careers, and as we get older as guides, what species we've spent more time with and, and know more about, depending on where we've worked. <clears throat> Gemma, you're curious to know, does a leopard pant with their mouth open, especially when they're very hot, Gemma, yes they do. Because remember, they don't have sweat glands, so the only way that they can cool themselves down is by lying in the shade and with that panting. And sometimes it's a big open mouth, especially if they're very full, and sometimes it's a, just a little bit of a gap. So now she's grooming herself, and as we know, or maybe for some of our new viewers um, who are joining us, you may not know, when lions or leopards or cheetah are getting ready to start moving, they yawn, they stretch, they groom themselves, and sometimes that movement means they're actually going to get up and go, and sometimes the movement just means they're either going to reposition or just sort of flop down. So she's basically getting ready for her day of rest. That's a beautiful little shot there, keeping an eye on us. Linda, you'd like to know if leopards mate for life. So, Linda, leopards, both males and females, are very territorial. And those territories for a leopard or territory for a lion or territory for a cheetah are territories that are against other individuals of their same species. So what you'll notice with a leopard like Tundi, for instance, she has a territory that borders with Shadow's territory, that borders with Kachava's territory. There's a couple of females here. And then you'll have males like Tingana and Mvula, who have territories. Now sometimes you'll have a male where all three of those females are just within only his territory or sometimes you'll have a scenario like we have now where those three females we chatted about have territories inside of two different males territories, Tingana and Mvula's, um, and then their territories also have other females that we don't necessarily see where they over overlap. 
And so there's a possibility when you have those two male territories where they have female territories that are half in one and half in the other, for lack of a better way to explain it just now, that they either might mate with Tingana or they might mate with Mbula. If there's just one, if their territory is just within one male's territory, they'll mate with that male until that male is pushed out, and then they'll start mating with another male. And every now and then you get a sneaky little nomadic male that will come through, and they might um, be around when, say, Tandi is in estrus when she's ready to mate, and that might end up being being the leopard. But when she's ready to mate, she'll call in uh, the male, uh, she'll start uh, demarcating her territory and home range um, more hectically, for again, lack of a better term, and calling him in, and then he'll find her and go. So, no, it's not really mating for life, but there is a possibility that for her to have, if, if her lifespan and, say, Tingana's lifespan overlap enough where both of their territorial lives are coinciding to the point that you might have many litters from one male, but it's not always the case. Interesting question, Sky Doogie. You want to know if Tundi runs into Tumba, will she be aggressive towards him? I think it'll depend if she has her new cub with her or not. I think it'll depend if she has a kill with her or not. And I think it'll depend on whether or not she thinks he's trying to be too um, personal with her and she's not quite ready for that yet. She might still make kills and share them with him because our le po leopard populations are we've got high densities here um, she'll definitely not want him around the, the den site and she's not going to mate with him, he's not old enough to mate with yet but that's not to say in a few years that that might not happen so it would be very very much dependent on, on scenario Michelle, you're curious to know at what age will the cub spot pattern come in? And I believe you're asking about the spot pattern that occurs above the top whisker line. Michelle, it's already there. They're born with it. Those markings, like I have a mark on my leg that's a birthmark that's been there since I was born. It's the, the same thing. And also your fingerprints um, are, are there pretty much from when you're born. Obviously, they can change a little bit if you, you know, burn off the skin on your finger. But yeah, those spot patterns are already there. They'll be easier to see and to identify the older it gets. As you've noticed now, when we were looking at the cub, um, it's quite dark. But there's a few shots that I know that happened from this morning and a few shots from our magical little Christmas sighting as well where you can start to pick up those, those spot patterns. I can have a look when I get home today on some of my images and see if I can um, identify it for you all and send it out for you. A lot of um, tawny flanked prinias that are flying around at the moment and our alarm calling uh, quite hectically and that has a lot to do with where Tundi is lying. So they're seeing her and, and going, there's a leopard here, there's a leopard, a leopard. She seems not to care too much. Alright everybody, it looks as if this is going to be Tundi's resting place for the day. It also looks as if that cub is definitely in for a nap. She hasn't tried to call it out again. I think she has allowed us to have a really amazing sighting and she also allowed us to come back with her again to carry on the sighting after she moved off a bit. So I think we've done well and I think it's about time for us to move off and let her, let her be. I hope you enjoyed. I definitely did. I know Ferg did as well. And I can tell that Nikki did from the little yays in my ear as we were getting those the shots of those that of that cub. 
And also she's chosen a position where we're basically staring at the back of her head. So thank you, Tundi. Thank you, Tundi's cub. This was amazing. And Ferg and I will leave you in peace now. And meander off and see just what might pop up as we carry on out of the drainage line here. Okay. I'm just going to start reversing out a little bit. We might, well, we'll still have a bit of view with her as I reverse the car out. Oh, sorry. Sorry for the shake, everybody. That was my fault. Sorry, Ferg. All right. It seems as if Ralph has a cat species for you. It's not the lion. It's not a leopard. It is our other magical cat species, the cheetah. How exciting. I'm excited for you, Ralph. Happy New Year's, and I hope you guys enjoy that very, very much.